This is day six of the September 92 seven day retreat at Springwater. The notes that I wrote down I still carry the deep Zen conditioning that I should work harder, that I'm not doing enough, that I should sit more to attain enlightenment, and so forth. What does one do when one comes upon what one calls this old Zen conditioning? Is it hard work, hard work to listen to this sound? The person who was saying this, but there were several people in this retreat who have said similar things. The person was saying it was touching a spot in her body, this deep conditioning touching a spot of tension or wanting, whatever. And to report this old Zen conditioning, I should be working harder, I should do more sitting, go deeper. Doesn't one also hear inner commands, not doing enough, apply yourself more, whatever all was said. It's on the tape. It plays at times. One can hear it. One can hear it. It's, it's audible. It's perceptible. What one says to oneself or thinks the inner guiding voice is saying, it's all old tapes. And the production of tension in the body, the tension of guilt, of yearning, of wanting, all manifesting in this very sensitive organism, sensitive to the thoughts that run through the mind, not just through the mind, they connect throughout the body with other nerves and chemicals and receptors on organs and muscles and so forth. So, can at, at a time of becoming aware of what's going on, be, be simple attention to what is going on. The voices and the physical dis-ease or uneasiness are the, the movement of striving or ambition are palpably manifested in the body, ready to be observed, felt, heard, seen. Like the rustling branches and the motor humming above. In, in such attending, there's a shift from continuing to go after an imagined goal or be driven by recorded voices 
to observing the whole scenario as it is happening without judgment. It shouldn't be so as a judgment which sets up a, another tension, more conflict in the body, which can also be felt, and can feel the increasing knot, knottiness of the body as one is fighting it or wants it to be free of it. There's yet another knot. I find listening is easier without any particular focus than looking. Or listening without any particular focus is much easier than looking. I was looking at the flowering meadow when a cat was walking by. Immediately I focused on the cat and everything else became the background. People here keep their eyes closed so much. Is that because it is easier to listen than to look? Actually, few people have reported that it's easier to look than to listen. And I, I, I don't know whether people keep their eyes down or closed because it's easier to listen without focus. Actually, when the mind is open, the seeing is not separate from the listening or smelling or touching because it is, it is so that the senses are one whole perception. when not divided up by the intellect into hearing, seeing, and what I see, and what I hear, and what it is, and how I react to it, what it reminds me of. That is what fra fractions the world, fragments it. Obviously, a black, black and white cat is walking through a flowering field that's noticed. The, the, and movement, uh, pronounced movement, is noticed by the eyes. The eyes are moving to detect movement, maybe for survival reasons, as this program. But if the mind is, is open, it needs not shut down because a cat is walking through the field. This one becomes very involved. What is this cat? Is it this cat or that cat? Does it belong to us? If it's my cat, should I take it home so it doesn't bother the retreat? Thoughts like this can become more and more of a focus. But so one notices the cat is the focus and everything else has receded to the background. How did one notice that? It must have been a new moment of awareness to see that. See, it, it, there's not a practice here to, to find open awareness and, and be sure that, it's, that there's no focus. But to, to notice what happens when suddenly a, a very uh, inviting or scary thought comes to mind. Or usually one doesn't notice what happens, how the mind begins to emote and think and worry or desire. And then if attention sets in to see what has happened and how the thoughts have got the body all riled up in desire or fright. And during that time, 
Somebody just told me this morning, I don't hear any wind when I get engaged or involved in some thought. Don't hear any airplane. Just to, to find out, to find out. And to watch how with everything and anything the mind wants to become something. Thinking now I've got it, I'm better, I'm worse. What I'll be when I'm enlightened. Always wanting something, to be something, to become something. In the future, can one learn directly from direct experience how thought creates the future, creates time? person just this morning said last night there was a sitting after a whole day of thinking I was so tired of it I went to bed I didn't even want to come back down and sit I had thought all day long and then after a while I came down anyway thought what what's the difference nothing worse can happen <laughs> and the mind slowed down <laughs> The real feeling of, of, of a new energy. Not because one had wanted it or expected it was something totally unexpected and therefore surprising. lost my train of thoughts. <laughs> I wanted to connect this up with something, but there goes the connection. <laughs> oh, no, this is the connection. It actually comes back on its own. <laughs> One thing she reported was there was no sense of time. And it was not a philosophical statement. It was a reporting a fact. No sense of time. How long one was sitting, whether it was day, night, today, tomorrow, seventh day, fifth day. It, that is all created by thought. And it, it can be noticed to one's great surprise and amazement that it is thought that creates tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll go, I'm going to do this. It happened in, in a meeting yesterday. Somebody said, tomorrow I'm going to do that. And another person said, I don't know what tomorrow is. What is tomorrow? I don't think it was heard, that remark. I don't know. No one entered in on it. It's a good question. What is tomorrow right now? Not I shouldn't think of tomorrow. That's creating time of what I should do today. Just to, to come upon things, like we come upon new flowers growing in the marshes. Because there's a little bit of openness in the mind to see something new. Will thought immediately grab it and make something of it? We'll see. Is the listening and looking without a focus enough? I get bored. (laughs) 
was brought up in a, something like this what brought, was brought up in a group. And we can pick up the question, what is boredom? Statement comes up in the mind, I am so bored. Either one knows already what boredom is, it's a very unpleasant state and I wish something would happen. Is this enough, the listening and looking and maybe the mind drifting to what I used to do, maybe in a different center. There was less boredom because there was something to do, a structure, a practice, someone seeing to it that one was not moving. Or will, will it occur to wonder what this boredom is that one has just diagnosed in oneself? What is it? And listen to it like to the wind. Something has already been mentioned, how the mind drifts off to things that are more interesting because there's not sufficient stimulation here or focus. Is it the lack of stimulation that one is used to? Is that the border? Like a state of withdrawal? withdrawing from some drug addiction and having to go through a state of no stimulation and, and the pain and discomfort or boredom of that, is that part of it? Nothing happening and wanting something to happen. One can feel that it's all organismically manifesting. The body wanting something and not getting it feeling bored, frustrated, it takes, all it takes is a fine tuning, a fine tuning in, which can happen maybe easier when one is sitting motionlessly. Because in walking, going someplace, there's not so much boredom. Things are happening, body's moving. I'm seeing things and discovering things around me. But in quiet, motionless sitting, the boredom comes into focus. And can one motionlessly, meaning non-judgmentally, non-condemningly or non-acceptingly, motionlessly, wonder what is bored? And as we were sort of doing last night, one can ask a question, am I bored because I want something? And then be quiet. Not say, yes, it is, but quiet, to, to, to see what comes up. Am I bored because I'm afraid of just being with this? Question coming up, and be quiet again. A question has come up which beckons to be looked into, not to be answered. We can always do that, give a quick answer, a quick explanation. And then this, this subtle moment of wondering without knowing is gone. Am I afraid of being with what's there? Is that the boredom? And quiet. And listening what's coming up. And maybe in such listening there are also the crickets and the wind. And a getting in touch with subtle movements of the body for or against something, subtle resistances to experiencing this thing which we know is boredom. But now we don't know, therefore the resistance is palpable. Or if it isn't palpable, what is resistance? Ask the question and then quiet. And in that quiet, which comes from having asked a question, an interesting question. Things reveal themselves, which, which do not, if we say, well, I'm just bored. I get so bored without this or that. In, in going through these things, in the meeting, a person said, 
that questioning makes sense. I didn't know that one could question that way. I thought it was just listening without a focus. So it's good if things are brought up. We're so conditioned to do what we think we're supposed to do here. Allow yourself to do what you need to do. To think about your condition, if that's what you need to do. One may find out amazing things one hasn't found out before. You say that being attentive is arduous. I find that this is so. It's true, it is so. And after a while, I just want to relax and not keep questioning anything. What is relaxation? Before going into this, someone may point out at this moment in their minds an inconsistency to me that I say it's arduous, I've said that, and say it's no effort. Listening to this, whatever it is, is no effort, is it? Or is it? If one wants to go with a pleasant thought and, and be immersed in it and, and the, the pleasure that the pleasant thought elicits throughout the body, enjoy that, then to, to, to just say what's going on right now and, and, and listen to it may be arduous because the whole momentum of the stream is to go with the pleasure or with the habit of thinking some more. There's a tremendous momentum to this. A going with pleasurable thoughts, we'll just take that as an example. If, if, no, if no attention happens, then it just goes on. But one wakes up to the fact that this is going on, let's say, this is happening, a moment of attention, then will one say, what is going on, and listen? Or will the momentum sweep over, flood over this moment of attention? And in in keeping attentive, wanting to find out what's going on, there is a certain ardor or, or effort involved. Because the energy of that attending to what's happening must at least be equal to the energy of, of, of the momentum to sweep on with the pleasurable feelings. Maybe a little bit larger, I don't want to go into that kind of figuring, but... Or let us put it this way, if the mind is not attentive most of the time, then to stay with something when attention happens, it's felt as ardor. Many people say that. One person who was taking this very seriously once, was in a California retreat, told me in the evening meeting, I've never, ever been so exhausted in all my life as this one day of trying to keep moment-to-moment -moment attention. And maybe someone has done similarly here and says, at times I just want to relax. Well, the person who talked about going to bed and too much thinking is also exhausting. Doing too much, having done too much attending, with also some willpower push to do that. Maybe that'll do me good. It also is exhausting. I just want to relax. What's wrong with that? Is there anything wrong with that? Relaxing. And what is relaxation? That's interesting. Is it relaxing just to listen to the wind, or is that exhausting? 
sometimes it seems the mind relaxes by going back into the thinking mode from attending, because attending is so exhausting. It's relaxing to think, to dream, to fantasize, to think of tomorrow and yesterday, or to see a movie or video. Is that relaxation? One has to find out for oneself. And one may find, as, as someone did, that in trying to relax, not direct the mind in any way, all of a sudden there is a tension without ardor. Comes on its own. Because it's not one's property. It's something that happens to human beings. I mean here a attention, an attention without any purpose, without any goal, with no motive, just being there. Or rather, everything being there as it is. In one group meeting yesterday, Several people were relating experiences that they had. I just wrote one down. I remember an experience I had six or seven years ago. It lasted only a fraction of a second. And during this fraction of a second, there was like a crack of an opening in a muddy windshield and the sun and light coming through that crack in the mud. It has never come back since, but I still remember it and would like it to return. And other experiences were related also with this lingering feeling how, how nice it would be if it came back, waiting for it to come back. Is that what we're doing, waiting for experiences that we had to come back, or waiting for experiences we haven't had, but no others have had. We've read about them, heard about them, seen tapes about them, and now we want that, and we're waiting for it to happen. Can one listen to the sound of waiting as it sings throughout the body and mind, which are one? The sound of waiting, the sound of expecting, the sound of wanting, desiring, fearing, <coughs> fearing I'll never get it, or the sound of hoping, can one tune into that? The words, the images, the tensions throughout the body. the creation of the future and the past in this? Can one see it? Remembering what was and waiting for it to happen again? Listening to the sound of wanting, is there any time in that? It's happening. Is it? The sound of, 
of wind? Is there any time in that? Someone said, do we keep waiting for experiences we have had to come back? Wait for enlightenment or openness to hit us? Or do we start looking at the mud on the windshield? Waiting for something to happen in the future sets up tensions within. Can I just start looking and feeling that tension or whatever is right now. And I find that in being with what is right now, openness happens or openness begins, is, that's how it was put. That's where openness starts, in being and looking and feeling, experiencing what is right now. Oh, and with that, openness begins. Not the ideal, ideated openness in the future. That never happens. That will never happen. I found here in this retreat, which is my first one, that it is all right not just to focus exclusively, exclusively on the breathing, on my breathing. But that it's all right and beautiful to look and listen and smell around whatever is around. Everything is so beautiful here, but I'm afraid that back again in my New York City apartment, with its loud noises, TV upstairs, radio downstairs, sirens and car alarms filling the air, I'll close down again and just focus on the breathing. And someone else asked at a different time, different meeting, is there any difference whether one listens here or on a big street in Boston? Maybe the, the organism has some sort of safety features to close down when the, the noise is too loud. I don't know. People do bust their eardrums in rock groups or wear, wear earplugs. Or, so there may not be that protective mechanism against noise to, to shut it out. Or, yeah, people say I, the, the airplane is shut out when I get involved with myself. So there is something, but we, we don't want to talk about uh, this kind of shutting down of the senses, which happens when there is fear or repulsion, rejection. The question is, is the hearing any different, whether I'm in my New York City apartment or in the street of Boston, or walking, or sitting here in this beautiful countryside, this quiet countryside. Is it different? Is the hearing, the listening different? Does it have to be different? If there's shutting down, Obviously, there is no listening. But if there is no shutting down, is it any different listening? Does the listening 
depend on what it is that is heard? Does openness depend on the objects that appear in this openness? One has to experiment with it as one goes back to the city. It's, it's noisier here too after a retreat. Times we have chainsaws or table saws going. Tremendous noises or TV going on. One guards oneself against the, too much of the chainsaw with having earmuffs on. But let's take it, even with earplugs or something over the ears, does the listening need to stop? Does the openness need to get shut down? It has nothing to do with what you put over your ears or eyes. Openness is not just a state of the senses and what the senses apprehend. It's a state of, of being without defense or resistance, open to what's there. And what's there may be pleasant or unpleasant, painful. I can imagine the way it was described, the car, si the car alarms, the sirens, TV upstairs and radio downstairs. Painful to the nervous system. That's why there is a shutdown. The brain affects that, so it is not so painful to the nervous system. But one can experiment with it, barring exposing oneself to too many decibels that the eardrums bust or something. Experiment with it, whether it's possible to listen to, to any sound without any resistance or judgment or comparison to what was so beautiful here and what is so ugly there. A, a listening without, without. Maybe, the, maybe that shifts something. Or that is a shift from me caught upness and comparison and suffering being being a, a victim to just aware of what is and maybe if possible moving out of the big city because if one is out of the big city one would like to be in the big city This getting used to thing that we, we talked about yesterday happens to us. We get used to quietness and want some stimulation of a city. Not everyone, and not all the time, but it happens. From the way you, Tony, talk about openness, as an unfocused open awareness without any borders or self-concern. The mind immediately sets it up as a goal to attain, as the right thing to do. So here one has been talking about the goals that are set at Zen centers to become enlightened, and finds when one oneself is talking about openness, undivided awareness, with absence of, of a self-concern, no borders. And the same thing happens, does it? Setting up what is heard as a goal, the mind abstracting it as something to attain, the right thing to do, and comparing it with what I'm doing right now, which is the wrong thing, the insufficient thing. 
and the whole movement of comparison and misery continues. Does it mean one stops giving talks because of all the risks of being seen as goal-oriented or the mind not even seeing me as goal-oriented but the mind picking it up as something it wants to attain? I hope we're not talking about openness all the time. It comes up a lot in questions. But we do look at the mud too, don't we? Being with the misery, the tension, the anger, the fear, and not knowing it, allowing it to reveal itself, to flower, if you will, in, in the presence of a gentle attending, which is non-judgmental. We do talk about that a lot. And the more it's brought up, the more we'll talk about it. But in mentioning openness, which is asked about a lot, unfocused listening and so forth, it's not talking about something out there, it's coming from that. The words exp are expressing something that's there. And as it happens, it, it reverberates, it can reverberate in you and me, in both of us, in all of us, in some of us, depending, today one, tomorrow another. Because it's, communication is not just verbal. It's not just the words and the imagery that it evokes. Is there something else going on? Another communication which has also been called a communion. Participating in something, the words are inadequate. In, participating in something that is beyond all words and concepts. Much vaster than this personality that has developed in you and me over the years, over the decades, the millennia. How can this be conveyed that there is more to you and me than our ideas and memories and images and emotions and desires which are aroused by memories and images and anticipations. And in listening or reading, hearing someone talk, can there be a quiet listening that doesn't immediately translate into goals and desire to have or fear of not having or if those movements arise can they appear in this quiet listening like the plane out of nowhere It was through reading 
certain books, certain authors, that something has started in oneself, wondering. Was it his desire to get something? Probably. I remember reading enlightenment stories, I don't know how many times over. We were even told before, Sashin, read the enlightenment stories to get up your order. Your motive are you? driving power. Of course we want that state. What's wrong with it? Watch it. Be aware of it. See what it does. And yet to know that there is something beyond all of this misery of ambition and failing and succeeding and comparing and having and losing and wanting it again. Hearing that there is something much vaster which is not affected by all of that. All of that can happen. A space for it. Does that help? It all depends what, what one makes of it. Just to listen to it or to read it and to hold it in the mind. Somewhere the mind holds it. Without doing anything with it, keeps it there in suspense on the back burner. Is that possible? Does that happen? I think it happens. And yet, probably, the thought comes to mind, if we had never heard about such a thing as a state of freedom, aloneness, you can call it, which, is, which really means all oneness, if we had never heard of this, it still happens to human beings who've never heard about it never wanted it, never strove for it. It just happens. Because it's there. This is how this universe is. Open and freely moving in silence. We will end here for today.